Welcome to The Curious Show. Today, we want to celebrate the potential of NGS and genomics with holiday spirits. Hi, my name is Shu Bols. I'm the Director for Strategic Marketing for Genomics at Kaiyujin. Uh, Curious Show uh, is our one-hour virtual event. We hope to provide you with some helpful information as well as some lighthearted entertainment between your busy schedule. Today, I'm delighted to be joined by Peter in the studio today. Yeah, thank you very much, Shu. And of course, we also would like to welcome our customers, the Kaijiners, our external speakers, and of course, also partners joining our Curious Show today. My name is Peter Hesse, I'm the head of genomics at Kaijin, and very much looking forward to discuss and celebrate the potential of NGS. But before we go there, Shu and me will highlight briefly you know, the exciting agenda of today. Absolutely. Today we want to showcase um, how easy it is to access NGS technology. So first off, um, our colleague Sanjana will show us step by step yeah. um, of her microbiome project. Um, next, we also have some invited guests from our partners from Element Biosciences and Pacific Biosciences to share their insights and vision for the future of NGS. Yeah. yeah, great. And of course, we also will discuss a little bit about the NGS history in Kaijins, how it all started. And one topic of today is, of course, also to discuss the common NGS challenges and how Kaijin with a sample, in a sample to inside solutions can help you all to overcome those challenges. Um, last but not least, we also will listen to a few customer stories. We will truly show the potential of the sequencing technology and, of course, not only for research, but also for clinical applications. Absolutely. And on top of this packed agenda, we also prepared a game for our audience members. Um, so the game is uh, we invite the audience members to solve a six-letter word uh, with the codon table. So it is, um, it is a show about genomics after all. Of course. Um, so we want to give out the first clue, uh, which is to solve for um, the codon uh, that challenge, uh, excuse me, that codes for um, CAG, which codes for glutamine, the amino acid glutamine, or Q by abbreviation. So please look out for clues that we'll give out for five additional codons that codes for a six amino acid chain sequence. And the winner will get a prize. I will announce the winner at the end of the show. So please write in your answer in the chat box along with your name. Um, so also we want to invite our audience members to participate in our polls today. And we look forward to hearing from you. And if you have any questions, please be sure to submit. And we have experts standing by to answer the questions. Um, so with that said, I think we're ready to hear from Sanjana to see how she would start a microbiome project, the first step being sample prep. Yeah, let's do it. Let's, let's take a look. I think I see a pattern here. Let me quickly sequence it. Sequencing and finding patterns easily. This is what NGS allows us to do. NGS is a driving force of numerous new and exciting applications. The KayaSeq NGS product line includes extensive DNA, RNA and multimodal library prep kits for all applications. Today we will explore the microbiome using NGS. To investigate the effects of antibiotics on the gut microbiome, we will look at two samples. One before antibiotics and the other after. Let me show you how easy the NGS workflow is. We go from sample to insight in four steps. Sample isolation, library prep, sequencing, data analysis and interpretation. Sample isolation is a key step in the workflow. It's important to have as high quality DNA or RNA as possible. Nucleic acid quality and purity depend on sample handling, storage and the isolation method. For our example, we need the Kaya Amp Power Fecal Pro DNA whole genome sequencing kit, but Kyogen offers extraction kits for all samples. Let me show you some of the steps we have today for our sample isolation. First, we will start by mixing some of the stool sample with solution CD1. 
Next, the tissue lyser will help to lyse the samples. And after a centrifugation step, we will transfer the supernatant for the following steps. Solutions such as CD2 and CD3 will be added and there are vortexing and centrifugation steps in between. After that, we will load the lysate onto a spin column, which is followed by another centrifugation step. After several washing steps with solutions EA and C5, we elute the DNA with solution C6. The amount of sample input used varies depending on the library kit. To ensure consistent and reproducible results during library preparation, it's important to measure the quantity of genomic DNA used as input. The first step is done. The sample is isolated. Up next, library preparation. Stay tuned. Yeah, thank you very much to the video of Sanja and the great insight she has provided to, to all of us. So let's switch the gears and discuss a little bit about the uh, NGS or the sequencing history before we start looking into collagen history. Uh, so we all know it's a very um, amazing story what happened over the last couple of decades and it all started of course with the discovery of the DNA structure back in the 50s uh, by James Watson and Francis Crick and it took another 20 years before actually the real first sequencing technology by Frederick Sanger so the Sanger sequencing technology has been developed uh, and actually a technology which is still used today. Um, then it took another couple of years before a big project was kicked off the Human Genome Project with a goal to map the entire genome of a, of a human. Uh, and this was actually accelerated by another invention by Craig Venter, you know, with the shotgun sequencing, putting little fragments or having little fragments and then putting it together with the data assembling. Uh, at the end, it took another couple of years, 2001, billions of dollars, you know, in order to sequence actually the whole genome. But it's actually a fantastic story if you see what actually we all can do today. Yeah, that was a truly incredible project of many scientists came coming together to get the human genome sequenced. And I think shortly after that, um, quite a few commercial companies came together to launch sequencing platforms such as Illumina, 454, Ion Torrents, that start to make sequencing, short resequencing technology accessible to research mm -hmm. researchers um, that made sequencing data or sequencing projects to be explo an explosion. Um, so that generated a lot of insight for genomics, genetics data um, to help us uh, understand our own biology a lot better. Um, and I think shortly after that, we start to see the onset of the third generation sequencing. So long read, mm. um, spearheaded by Pacific Biosciences, PacBio, Oxford Nanopore, ONT, uh, which actually we'll hear a little bit about from our partner from Pacific Biosciences. Um, so the, the field of cancer biology, microbial sequencing, and epigenetics um, is, are really exciting fields to be in, powered by sequencing technology. So really exciting times. Yeah. I think, yeah, we all can agree that a lot of innovations has happened uh, in the last decades, and we're all, of course, curious what is happening in the next years and decades in sequencing technology. With that, let's switch now to the NGS history in collagen. So how did it all start? And therefore, I would like to hand over to my colleague, Brian Dugan, who will present that to us. Hello, my name is Brian Dugan. I'm Senior Director of Global Product Management for Kaijin's Universal Connection Sequencing Portfolio, or our KaiSeq Portfolio. It's been my privilege to work in genomics for the past 12 years and at Kaijin since 2015. The KaiSeq portfolio is truly a story of organic innovation driven by the collaboration between product managers, R&D scientists, sales, marketing, and operations team members since we launched this portfolio in 2016. Let's go back to two seminal events that have been the catalyst of this innovation and the hallmark of KaiSeq products from its launch. First, in 2009, Kaijin acquired a small company called Super Array Biosciences. SA Biosciences was a PCR array company. The scientists and production team had built a business of custom made-to-order arrays that were truly unique at the time. And that team is still largely in place today and has been a driving scientific force behind the history of Kaisi. Six years later in 2015, 
Kyogen acquired Enzymatics, our powerhouse of enzyme development and production found throughout our kits. These enzymes propel some of the most sensitive solutions on the market today. 2016, we launched the first Kyoseek products to the market. Termed Digital NGS, we launched the Kyoseek targeted RNA panels, Kyoseek targeted DNA panels, and the Kyoseek microRNA library kits. These were the first commercial kits to have incorporated molecular barcoding for error correction, but that wasn't the only innovation. The Kyoseek targeted DNA panels incorporated novel chemistry that enabled researchers to achieve highly sensitive results. In 2018, the team recognized that the largest labs in the market required special challenges and had special needs. These labs were seeking a truly professional service, one that would elevate their purchasing experience. They wanted Kyogen to be more than just a vendor, but a professional partner. With this, we launched Enterprise Genomic Solutions, or EGS. EGS is a consulting service that speeds the customer experience by delivering high touch, consultative support. Customers can receive customized solutions that fit their needs while only approaching our eighth year of Kaisi. There are so many innovations, we don't have time to recall them all. But from the Kaiseek FX library prep kit to Fast Select, Kaiseek changed the game for library prep of DNA and RNA sequencing. From Kaiseek Direct to Kaiseek DNA Pro, we evolved from our first generation kits to faster solutions to analyze things like COVID and human DNA variants. What we're most excited about, though, is the future. To date, Kaisi kits have processed more than 4 million NGS samples. And in my opinion, the best is yet to come. Great, thank you, Brian. So um, as we've heard from Brian, um, this is such a fast developing industry and um, from Kyogen's side, um, this, there has been a lot of development within our own company as well. So a very exciting place to be. Um, so with this great technology as well as great technology tool, um, it is not without its own challenges in terms of accessibility. Um, so we want to hear from you, our audience member. Um, what are your biggest challenges when you try to access this research tool? While we wait to hear from you, um, I would like to welcome my colleague Dylan uh, to have a chat very, uh, to have a chat about what we hear from our customers, the common challenges when they use NGS technology. So Dylan, welcome to the studio. Yeah. Uh, please introduce yourself. Thanks, Shu. Uh, my name is Dylan Barbera. I'm a global product manager here at Kyogen, and I'm happy to talk to you today. Great. Um, let's start off with uh, chatting about some of the common challenges we hear from our customers uh, when they use NGS technology. Yeah, sure. So as Sanjana's demonstration shows, the whole workflow starts with input. And while it's typically ideal, obviously, to start with high-quality nucleic acids, often from more difficult sample types, we end up with less than ideal inputs. This can include sample types like FFPE or uh, fragmented DNA like CFDNA or archival samples and things like that. And often these more difficult sample types have a lower yield output from your actual extraction. And so that's a common problem that people have is that a lot of the workflows out there have a high input requirement for samples that typically have a lower yield. And so Kyogen R&D has really has a lot of expertise in this area working with these really difficult samples and it's something that we've really optimized our products around. So for example, the Kyseek targeted DNA kit is compatible with inputs down to 10 nanograms and works with a wide variety of samples like FFPE. We have the Kyseek FX DNA library prep kit for whole genome sequencing, which is compatible with inputs down to 20 picograms. And that still gives a very high, even uniform genome coverage across a wide range of GC bias. And then if you're working with RNA samples, we also have our fast select kits that work well with uh, degraded samples as well. Yeah, that's great to hear. And speaking of the, these archival samples, and these archival samples typically tend to be archived tumor samples, mm -hmm. which tend to shed a lot of insights on cancer biology, right? And they're preserved in blocks or mm -hmm. FFPE samples. 
Yeah, speaking of tumor cells, a uh, common application is doing sequencing and detection of som somatic mutations. Uh, often when you're looking at these somatic mutations, what you're specifically looking at is things like SNVs, CNVs, and indel mutations in these cancer cells that are often embedded in regular normal tissues. And that can be like looking for a needle in a haystack. So if you're working with an assay that has a low sensitivity, it can be very difficult to uh, detect low variant allele frequency. And so this is something that we've really focused on as well. Um, and so our targeted CFDNA Ultra Kit is a capable of detecting down to 0.1% VAF with over 99% specificity. Great. Um, as you mentioned, detection of, <clears throat> excuse me, detection of um, somatic mutations from solid tissue or using liquid biopsy samples for variant detection are very, very hotly researched areas. I think a lot of our customers are very interested in researching those fields. Um, what are some other common challenges um, with sure. our customers? Yeah, so, you know, very recently a lot of new higher throughput sequencers have come out and that really has allowed people to drive down their sequencing costs quite a bit because they can multiplex a lot more samples at once. But what that means is you have to process many more NGS libraries at once, which can be a very time consuming and resource consuming part of your workflow, especially if you're doing a manual library prep, which can take several days. So, you know, we recommend that people really look into automation once they start moving to this higher throughput. And uh, that's also something that we've really built our chemistry around as well with a lot of enzymatic steps like enzymatic fragmentation and enzymatic cleanups, which are more amenable to automation and really shorten your turnaround time. Right, um, and also that means less plastic consumable, right? And yeah, I think correct. that has a lot of impact on um, being more sustainable as mm -hmm. well. Um, so we have less plastic disposable and greener um, being the lab. So I think that has a lot of impact. Um, so we have been working a lot with our partners with um, platforms that provides automation solutions to enable our customers to do that. I think yeah. that makes a lot of impact as well. Um, are there additional challenges? Yeah, one thing to also consider is the deep level of expertise it really takes to optimize your NGS workflows. Library prep, chemistry, primer design, and bioinformatics pipelines are each their own individual hurdle to overcome when designing your process. So Kyogen has developed optimized algorithms for primer design that allows you to use our GeneGlobe custom builder online to build your panels that work with our chemistry. However, if you need more hands-on support, our enterprise genomic solutions team is also there to provide you hands-on support to actually get your panel built as well. Right, and then, <clears throat> excuse me, in addition to that, perhaps the bioinformatic piece yeah. um, might have been the biggest hurdle for um, NGS access, right? So um, our Kaijin Digital Insight team has provided the solution for um, secondary and tertiary analysis so the customers don't have to do their own programming, but rather provide a solution that's a user-friendly interface and they can easily and very fast, in a very fast fashion, um, process their raw reads and um, go through secondary and tertiary analysis very easily and use um, the database that can very fastly do very interpretation and provide reports. Um, so it shouldn't be ter too terribly difficult and you don't have to have your own bioinformatician in the lab to process sequencing data. Yeah, and while each one of these steps that we've talked about today is its own challenge, um, you know, it's nothing really to worry about. Kyogen is here to help you at every step of the way from designing your actual custom built panel to actually getting the chemistry set up in your lab with our field application specialist that will actually come into your lab and help get the workflow started. Yes, that's great. Thank you, Dylan, for this very insightful discussion. So with that, now we have learned some history of NGS technology, as well as some insights of the steps of the NGS workflow. Are you ready to learn more? Please stay tuned for part two of The Curious Show. Kyogen. Sample to insight.